Hi there, thank you for joining me today. In this video, we're gonna be in the dining room because I wanted to talk to you a little bit about setting a proper dining table. Now, with the holidays before us, we're gonna all have family and friends over hopefully. And so it's important that the environment that we set to entertain our guest is as pleasant and enjoyable as possible. So it's more than just throwing out the paper plates and the red solo cups. You might want to think through a few other things while you're at it. So First of all, today I'm going to talk to you about uh, various things regarding the table setting. The first being a tablecloth. I love a tablecloth because it kind of sets a tone if you're using a theme, like if it's Christmas dinner, you could use a beautiful Christmas tablecloth or even just a red tablecloth. And the thing that is also so great about tablecloths and actually cloth napkins is that so many people don't use them anymore. You can really get some good deals in garage sales and on eBay. So keep your eye out for those. I have found some beautiful monogrammed linens for not a lot of money. So just don't compete with me, please. But first of all, uh, when before I break down the table that I currently have, this is just what I had out for a dinner party. And I gotta tell you, my table is old, supposedly an antique from France, and it is not always fun to eat on. So, um, Anyway, this was my table setting, and I did not have this glass vase out. But as part of talking to you about a table setting, I wanted to explain to you a low flower arrangement versus something in a high sort of vase. This one, uh, this is what I had here for the dinner party, and it was low enough that we could each see over it in order to talk and we weren't having to you know peer over or move it so when you're choosing your table decorations definitely go with items that are low if you're going to go with candles same thing go with something low or if you're using pillars or tapers put them outside the line of view if you only had four people let's say at this table you could put them on either edge here but if you really want to use tapers or pillars or something high, you can always put them on a sideboard. Uh, I have a couple in here that are perfect for taller things, just not on your table. And I also wanted to mention, when you're setting your table, make sure that you leave room for people to actually eat. Um, I have seen beautiful table decorations on Pinterest that I'm hoping are just as an example or the way they have the table set before the meal. Um, just, you know, for fun if they don't use their table every day. We do use our table every day. But you, you want to make sure that each person seated at the table have room for their plates, have room for their knives and forks and their glasses. You don't want your table to be so crowded with beautiful decorations that there's actually no room to eat. So keep that in mind. I always think the table should be almost beautiful and elegant, but simple because ultimately you want the food to shine through. So while I'm talking about candles and saying get low ones or votives or something small to the ground, you're also going to want to look for those that are not scented. And the reason is if you are serving a beautiful roasted turkey, you don't want it competing and its aromas competing with that of a peppermint candle or pumpkin spice latte or, you know, Chanel number no. five candle or whatever may be out there. You want people to get to enjoy the food with the aroma, with the way it looks. 
and then of course with the way it tastes. So keep that in mind. If you're using tapers, tapers should be dripless. You don't want taper candles dripping on your linens or all over your table. It looks messy and dirty and it'll ruin your linens. So uh, keep that in mind as well. Even with my floral arrangement, it was well contained, but I did put it on a little platter because while it is still fresh and I continue to water it and we enjoy it, I didn't want it to spill over and ruin the wood of my tabletop. So keep things like that in mind because you sure don't want to remove your beautiful flower arrangement and have ruined your table with it. So anyway, let me talk to you a little bit about tablecloths. Now, when you are picking out a tablecloth, I would recommend looking for what you know you can actually use. There are magnificent tablecloths out there that must be dry cleaned, that are very expensive, that are gorgeous. Those, if that is your lifestyle, that is what you need. But if you are the person who's like gonna run it through the washer and hope it survives because, you know, you're barely making it through your other tasks and jobs throughout the day, then, you know, um, there are at different linen kinds of stores, there are those tablecloths, and I have some, there's nothing wrong with them, where the moisture beads up, where they are pretty much just in permeable from any stain or spill. And those are typically, I believe, polyester. They will last you a lifetime. Yes, they look like, you know, better than a plastic type cloth, definitely. But um, if that's what you need to use, there is nothing wrong with it. You have still set a lovely table and invited people over. So don't worry about that. Now, I'm still kind of was throwing some shade on a plastic tablecloth, but a plastic tablecloth does have its place. So don't get rid of yours just yet. You may want to recycle them or upcycle them for another purpose. So today, let me clear the table just real fast. Okay. So I have a nice clean table in front of me and what I wanted to talk to you about is when you use a tablecloth, there's more to it than just throwing out a tablecloth. And the reason that is, oftentimes your table is going to be made out of wood, which you don't want to ruin the wood on your table. So you want something in between your tablecloth and your wood table. If your table happens to be glass or marble or something such as that, again, you want something in between your tablecloth and your table, not because moisture or heat from the dishes and glasses are gonna ruin your tablecloth or tabletop, but there's a lot of noise with things like glass and marble. So in this case, you would want something that is a sound deafener. And what I like to use is just a table pad. You can buy these, you can have them custom made, you can make them, mine is homemade. I made it just like a quilt. And so it is not perfect. I made it in just a few hours, if even. And all it is, is a quilt sandwich. So muslin on top, muslin on bottom, and in between just cotton, a thin cotton batting probably that I got on sale at Hobby Lobby. And I did not even take time to throw it in my sewing machine. I just, well, I did a little bit, it looks like. A lot of it's hand stitched and a lot of it is uh, machine stitched. This pad is made about three inches additional on each side. So an extra six inches all around so that, or three inches all around, but an extra six inches on a side or a end if you were to match up one end and one side. That is because I don't want it longer than my tablecloths and I'm never gonna use a tablecloth that short on a table that would look kind of ridiculous. But you also 
Don't want it so short that it's not gonna fall a little bit when you do put your tablecloth on. Now, if you don't wanna make something like this and you choose to use like a big piece of felt cup to size, you might wanna cut it exactly the size of your table. If you're having a table pad made custom, they will make it for each little, you know, um, special edging of your table. My mom had one that went with her table and it was just perfect match. Everything matched up. Hers had some decorative little corners on them and it was perfect. And that was made out of a felt on the bottom, probably some type of board that had then like a, a plastic uh, repellent coating on top. So that was perfect to put under a tablecloth. And in this case, like I said, it's going to absorb any moisture. It's gonna absorb the heat and keep like a warm plate if you've taken it out of your plate warmer or if you serve your dishes straight on your table, then it will help absorb some of that heat so it doesn't make it to your wood and ruin your wood finish. And then also the heat of the actual plate, uh, those can ruin your finish as well if you have a nice antique table. So if using a tablecloth, I highly recommend always putting some kind of a, a table pad underneath. Now, the, if you can't find a big piece of felt or you don't want to make something like this or buy somebody, you know, hire somebody to make a custom table pad, all you really need to do is get a piece of batting that would fit your table. It's going to stretch over time and you're not really going to be able to probably wash it without it being made into a little quilt, but it'll get you through some dinner parties and if, you know, you're only worried about Thanksgiving and Christmas this year, you'll be fine. Just get get something long enough or wide enough if you have a very wide table cut it just a little bit bigger or exactly on your table and then put your tablecloth on top so let me put my pad out and as i mentioned it is not perfect it just is not to be seen or heard it's just to assist your tablecloth to look pretty and not have to worry about any other purpose. So let me get a tablecloth and show you some tricks for how to fold or unfold it and put it on the table. So the tablecloth that I chose to use today literally has been in a drawer scrunched up. So before I actually would put it on my table to use it for a dinner party, I would iron it. But hopefully you don't mind, you'll overlook that situation. So the most important thing you can do with your tablecloth is fold it so that it makes it much easier to use on your table. Now, this tablecloth is one that I got on eBay. So it has a beautiful monogram on it. And it's one of those thick monograms that you really just don't see anymore these days. It appears, yes, it was machine made. So anyway, it's a gorgeous uh, tablecloth, kind of an off-white. It did come with 12 napkins that were also monogrammed so it is always a treat to use so for me the monogram is in the middle on a long side so i'm going to want it to fall here so that when guests walk into the dining room they can see the beautiful monogram it is tonal so it doesn't really show up that much but we know it's there okay so this because you have your pad down on your table, now your tablecloth isn't gonna move around so much, um, which is good because you don't have to worry about somebody, you know, pulling the tablecloth off the table as easily. It could still happen, but, but when you are putting your tablecloth on your table, it makes it a little more tricky. So you're gonna want to fold your tablecloth in a specific way. So what I like to do, let's pretend my tablecloth is on my table. I want my tablecloth to be folded one end over 
the other end this way and then one side over the other side so that I have a point that I can put right in the middle of my table and then just unfold it in a reverse action and not have to worry about moving the tablecloth and adjusting. So, now this tablecloth, even though it is gorgeous and lovely and I'm glad I bought it, it did have and does have a few marks on it. I don't know if it went through an estate sale and someone got ink on it or what happened, but I feel like, I feel like I'm wrestling the tablecloth and it is winning. So, and of course, Archie's over here looking on, but he's no help. Okay. So here, <laughs> here is my middle. Then I want to do side to side. <laughs> There's Archie. And he'll get mad when I step on him because I won't be able to see him. Okay. So I think this is going to be the center of my table and the way I know and why it's important for me again is this monogram. If there was no monogram, as long as I had long side matching up with long side, short side with short side, I would be good to go. Oops, I did just pull it, but that's okay. Take it back to the middle. Now, this tablecloth is a little too tight. Uh, long for my table and I will explain to you in a minute but what I did want to tell you is when choosing a tablecloth I like to get a tablecloth that falls about five to seven inches uh, on each side kind of a skirt and the reason is you don't want it so short that it looks ridiculous if this was on tablecloth uh, I don't know if you can really see but it would totally look ridiculous at this length, but you also don't want it so long that it's pulling in a person's lap so that, you know, if they're trying to get their napkin, they don't know if they have a tablecloth or the napkin. That's when people get it confused and pull the whole tablecloth off the table. So it's best if you can find a tablecloth that falls about, you know, five to seven inches around on all sides. So I have maybe, hopefully, got the tablecloth in the center. If you had two or four people, it might be easier. Everybody take a corner. I got Archie, and he's just not interested unless it involves eating. So now I should have my halves, I should have my overhangs even, I should have this halfway through my table, so that all then I need to do is take this piece over, and then all you have to do <laughs> after you climb over your dog is to straighten out any gaps or an evenness. Of course, I have wrinkles, so wrinkles should not be here, but I'm skipping a step with you today. So next, you would want to put your floral design or designs, again, low hanging. It would be neat to do something, you know, on down the table, especially since this is kind of a longer table. And then I always like to have salt and pepper on the table. 
and I have low candles. I also like to use place cards, and the reason I do, I'm not trying to pretend, you know, we're eating with the president or the queen or put on airs, but the reason I like to do that is I always want to sit closest to the kitchen so that <clears throat> I can run and get refills or the next course or refill the coffee pot or whatever needs to happen if I don't have someone helping me serve which normally I do not. So I don't wanna just say, don't say here, this is my spot. So I put a place card for myself. And then from there, I, I think it helps to direct the traffic so that people aren't scrambling. They know they have a spot. Even last week um, for the dinner party, there weren't, you know, there wasn't even six of us here, but I did use place cards because again, it made it less awkward and everyone knew where their seat would be. So that is getting the tablecloth on. Now, why don't we do just a real quick run through on where you put your knives and forks and all that sort of thing. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, so a proper place setting is going to have the plate and the silverware one inch from the edge. And you don't have to measure. If you do want to measure, you can use a joint of your <laughs> thumb just to be about one inch. So you can just eyeball it. And forks go on the left, knives and spoons on the right generally. There always are exceptions to rules as we know from English. So again, you want the bottom of all your silverware to line up at that inch mark. And then you don't want it, well, you could space it out, but I don't think that looks as nice. I like a kind of a tight place setting. So in this case, this says we have a meal, probably our entree and veggies. And that will be using a dinner fork and a knife. When you eat, as we know, we eat from the outside inward, typically. So if we were gonna have a salad plate and start with salad, then this would be our salad fork. And let's say this is our salad plate, which we could put up here with our salad or probably you know, serve it as a first course. Now with your drinks, your drinks always go at the tip of your knife and your water starts out. Then you go on to your wines in order that you will be drinking them. So this is just kind of a generic wine glass, probably more of a white if we were try, gonna try to be specific. But it just kind of goes to the right and down a little bit. If we also were gonna put out coffee, our coffee cup would go over here. There is no such turning it up or turning it down. I know when I was in college and our big uh, food service, if you didn't want coffee, you turned your cup upside down and that just kept them from having to ask you. But that was just kind of our little thing, not really a thing. So this tells us we have a salad and then our entree and a knife. Now, if we were going to have a soup, you might actually, a soup course, you might have a spoon over on the right. And normally a spoon is used for anything served in a bowl. So, if it's going to be a dessert served in a bowl. I generally like to put my uh, dessert spoon and fork at the top of the plate. Some people would put it inside, or a lot of times if you're getting a lot of silverware out on the table, it's just cleaner and more efficient to serve the silverware once you've cleared the last dirty course, then bring in the silverware that goes with your dessert course or whatever might be next. Now, I did wanna to talk to you a little bit, I don't have a bread plate with me, but I did wanna to talk to you a little bit about the difference in these two butter 
apparatuses. So this, with the point on it, is known as a butter knife. This, with more of the circular, if you can see that, this is called a butter spreader. Now, not every pattern of silverware or silver plate or silver um, is going to have both a silver uh, butter knife and a butter spreader. So what the difference is, the butter knife is used when you're actually cutting the butter, the stick of butter, and it is communal generally. <laughs> it is communal. So it would travel around with the butter dish. The butter spreader is, if your pattern has it, there will be one of these at each place setting. So let's pretend this is a butter plate. It is too big. It is not. It would be more of a salad plate or possibly a dessert plate. But if this was a butter plate, when you walked up to the place setting, it would normally be across the top like this or over on the side like this. Something to indicate this butter spreader goes with this butter plate although this we're just pretending, and they stay with you. So the way that would look on a place setting would be like this. Again, we're having to pretend the salad plate is a butter plate, but that gives you an idea of where that spreader should go. Now, I must admit, um, there have been times when my pattern didn't have a spreader. All I had was a knife and I was serving pats of butter. As long as I had multiples, one for each person eating, I used the butter knife at the place setting because that's what I had. So some of it is just, if you see both of these on a plate, know that your knife is gonna go with the butter and your spreader is gonna stay with you. As far as your napkins go, uh, you want to make sure that they are clean and pressed and free of stains. You don't want them to not match up like this one, which I probably haven't even ironed. Uh, there are so many different ways and cute ways. Sorry about that phone. There are so many ways and cute ways that you can fold your napkin, you know, make them look good for your guests. The most common and traditional way is just to have it folded in a rectangle and then actually put it to the left of your forks. So that is a rough example of what it could look like if you were doing a traditional fold. If you are short on space, then you could put your forks on top of your napkins. We see that a lot, especially around a family table. But that is just to give you an idea of basic layout. If you have things more complicated or don't have a lot of room, you know, you've kind of got to do what makes sense and what will be easiest um, to get everybody around. A lot of times if we're, you know, in a small apartment, their table might be tucked into a corner. So it's kind of a challenge for everybody to go get around. But the whole point of etiquette is to make it easy for everyone to know what the rules are and everybody working in the same direction so that we're not all grabbing for the same roll or the same glass of water. So as long as you do what makes the most sense and it's obvious to your guest, I think you'll be okay. So that is it for me today. I hope that you have a wonderful holiday setting. If you do have any questions in the meantime, you're welcome to reach out to me. Uh, table settings, if you need ideas or you have a challenge, I'd be happy to give you my thoughts. Uh, table settings are something that I do a lot of and I enjoy and I like for them to be very pretty and inviting, but also useful at the same time.
Thank you for joining me today. If you are new here, please subscribe and go ahead and hit that bell icon so you'll know each time a new video is posted. And I would love to hear from you. Please add your comments or if you have questions about table settings or what you're going to do for your Christmas or Thanksgiving dinners, uh, challenges you might have in your dining area, let me know. I'd be happy to give you my thoughts. So. Thanks again for being here. I'll see you next week. Bye.